Hello everyone. Welcome to a small terrible channel. This is Mr. Aseno, your science teacher for today. So this is we're going to discuss uh, session three entitled Neuron's second and third law of motion. This is still grade eight science unit one force motion and energy. Here we go. So still in quarter one, week one, learning competency, investigate the relationship between the amount of force applied and the mass of the object to the amount of chains in the object's motion. Our session objectives, first explain Newton's second law of motion, perform activities that would demonstrate the relationship between the mass of an object and the force applied to it to the acceleration of an object. Third, explain Newton's third law of motion. Fourth, cite applications of Newton's second and third law of motion. Okay, so let's uh, have a review first in our last session, okay? Let's try to check how much you understand uh, the concepts that we discussed on the last session. So you're going to answer whether the statement is, is, is true or false already. Okay, here we go. So first question. When there is an unbalanced force acting on an object, that unbalanced force causes the object to change its motion, to accelerate. Is it true or false? Of course, this one is definitely true. Second question. Okay, so... Hang on, let's try to check. The, show, the answer is being shown. That's not good. Okay, of course, this one is not. So it should not be shown. So for that, anyway, this is just a review. Okay. Second question when, question when the forces acting on an object that are balanced, the net force on the object is equal to zero. Of course, this is very true third when the when the forces acting on an object are balanced the net force on the object is equal to zero this is still true of course the last number four newton's first law states that first law states that every object continues in a state of rest or of uniform speed in a straight line unless acted on by a non-zero net force. So definitely that is true. Okay. So our topic, this is second and third law of motion. So the second, the Newton's second law of motion is what we call the law of acceleration. Right. So this is, let's have some, let's talk about the Newton's second law of motion. The, that is also called the law of acceleration. So according to this second law, the acceleration, acceleration produced by a net force on an object is directly proportional to the net force, is in the same direction as the net force, and is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Okay. You have there a dim illustration. Force of hand accelerates the brick is true so twice as much force produces of course twice as much acceleration so if you double the force you apply to the bricks of course the acceleration will double that means the acceleration mm -hmm. is directly proportional to the net force when you increase the net force the acceleration also increases that is why it is called the relationship is called directly proportional now twice the force on twice the force on twice the mass gives the same acceleration okay so twice the force on if, even if you double the force twice the mass gives but you double also the mass the same acceleration because acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass that means when you increase the mass at constant force or net force what will happen to acceleration 
an acceleration will decrease because mass and acceleration is inversely proportional. Okay? On the other hand, acceleration and force, net force, they are directly proportional. When you increase the net force, of course, the acceleration also increases. On the other hand, acceleration and mass are inversely proportional. That means when you increase the mass at constant force, what happened to acceleration? Acceleration will decrease. Okay, that's Newton's second law of motion. Right, so Newton's second law of motion. Since a non-zero net force acting on an object will cause the object to accelerate, change its motion, how much the object will accelerate depends on what? On the strength or magnitude of the net force on the object as well as its mass. So there are two factors, okay? The mass and the magnitude of the net force. And then acceleration, okay? So remember, acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. When you increase the mass at constant net force, the acceleration will decrease. Force and acceleration, they are directly proportional. When you increase the net force at constant mass, acceleration will increase. So this is the mathematical uh, equation. Okay. Right, so Newton's second law, an object of mass M subjected to forces, summation of force 1, force 2, force 3, will undergo an acceleration that is... A vector given by the formula acceleration is equal to force net force over mass. With the net force that is F net F is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus and so on. It's the vector sum of all forces acting on the object. The acceleration vector A points in the same direction as the net force vector or net force. I got vector F net or net force, vector net force. Okay. The acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on the object and inversely proportional to the object's mass. In mathematical form, summation of force is equal to mass times acceleration or net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So let's try to look at this figure. Okay. Let's have, start with the uh, picture on the left side. <clears throat> okay, remember there are three factors that we are going to study. The arrow stands for uh, the force applied, net force. Remember the red arrow, this stands for the net force. This one, the, bl the blue figure stands for the mass. And then this line or the line yellow, this is the red uh, arrow, this is the yellow arrow, stands for acceleration. So there are three factors that we are going to study. First, we have the net force we have the mass we have the acceleration okay so principle increasing mass decreases acceleration since mass is inversely proportional to acceleration at constant force so what we, what we're going to make constant is force as represented by the red arrow so this is this represent force it's constant as seen in the length of the arrow so we change the mass from here. The cart is empty, represented by this blue figure. And then this uh, second cart is full, represented by a bigger blue figure. So what have you observed? We increase the mass from being empty it, to being full. That is why here it becomes bigger. Then the force uh, applied by the boy by the same boy is constant, same force. So look at the relationship between acceleration at uh, lower mass. The acceleration is higher as represented by the long yellow arrow. 
Okay, here, when we increase the mass, what happened to acceleration? The acceleration decreases as represented by the yellow arrow. Remember, we held constant the net force. Okay, so we can say that increasing mass decreases acceleration. Next, let's have increasing force increases acceleration. So here, what we held constant, as you can see, both the cart, the shopping cart is empty. So we held constant the mass, okay? same size. Then we look at, we change now the net force. So here, the son pushed the cart, and of course, the father, which is bigger, applied a greater force. So the son applied a smaller force compared to the father. That is why the red arrow is long. So what happened to acceleration at constant mass? Same, same empty cart. The acceleration increases. So when you increase the net force at constant mass, acceleration also increases. So increasing force, increasing acceleration. So force and acceleration are directly proportional at constant mass. Okay, do you understand? Good. Now, Newton's third law of motion. This is what we call the law of interaction. So according to this third law, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. A reaction. Correct. Okay. Newton's third law. If two objects interact, the magnitude of the force exerted on object one by object two is equal to the magnitude of the force simultaneously exerted on object two by object one. And these forces are opposite in direction. So Newton's third law states that whenever an object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first object. Now, Newton's third law describes the relationship between two forces in interaction. That is why this is also called the law of interaction. So one force is, one force is called the action force, okay? The other force is called the reaction force. So what are the two forces? Action force, reaction force. Neither force exists without the other, meaning to say action force cannot exist without the reaction force and vice versa. They are dependent with each other. They are equal in strength, in magnitude, and opposite in direction. They occur at the same time, meaning simultaneous. If, you apply, if there is an action, Action force automatically, there is a reaction force. It should be equal in strength and opposite in direction. So look at the boy. Look at the wall pushing on me. The boy pushes the wall to the right direction. Of course, the wall also will push the boy in same with same magnitude, but in the opposite direction going to the left. So the boy, action force of the boy going to the right, reaction force of the wall going to the left. Same magnitude, same magnitude or strength, but opposite in direction. We call that the law of interaction or the law of action reaction. Now, when the girl jumps to the shore, the boat moves backward. Can you explain what happens in the context of Newton's third law? Okay, let's have a diagram. This is a situation. So let's have the diagram. Okay. Of course, the... Uh, girl pushes or the boy the girl push or jumps when he push the boat and of course the boy the boat also pushes the girl in the same strength or magnitude but opposite in direction okay we have the action and reaction force all right let's identify action and reaction force okay when action is, when action is a exerts force on b the reaction is simply B exerts force on A. For example, action. What's it? We have the boy riding a car. So action force, tire pushes road. Okay. The direction is this one. Action force. What happened? Reaction force, road pushes the tire. That is that why that's why that is why the car moves. Okay. Uh, next figure, they have action. Earth pulls ball. Reaction, balls pulls earth. So we have the two action reaction force. For example, action force rocket pushes gas. What well, it should be the reaction? Gas pushes rocket. Okay, go. 
Now, action and reaction on different masses. Earth is pulled up by the boulder. Really? With just as much force as the boulder is pulled down by the earth. Okay. Really? Okay. Now, action and reaction on different masses. A cannonball undergoes more acceleration than the cannon because its mass is much smaller. Okay? There you go. So we have action reaction on different masses all right let's have a demonstration or application of the newton's third law of motion with this we, with this we'll be able to understand deeply the concept of third law ready so this is a demonstration on Newton's third law of motion, we have a fire extinguisher, bicycle fired by fire extinguisher, okay? Okay, there you go. That's a very good. No. All right. So that's a very good application or demonstration of the third law of motion, the law of interaction. Okay. So important reminders for Newton's third law. Action, reaction forces are equal in magnitude. Remember that. And opposite in direction. Okay. Action, reaction forces acts on the different on different bodies, not on one body, unlike the balance and unbalanced force force it acts on one body but remember third law action and reaction force acts on different bodies okay that's the difference between balance uh force compared to action reaction force action reaction forces do not cancel out each other do not cancel out each other unlike the balance forces they cancel out each other okay now so defining system a football is kicked a acts on b and b accelerates letter b both a and c act on b so on d can cancel each other so b does not accelerate okay does not accelerate okay so this is a good example of the third law okay. this is balance force okay. next if the horse pulls on the cart with the same amount of force as the pull of the cart on the horse, why are they moving or accelerating? Yeah, that's a very good question. Remember, if the four, if the horse pulls on the cart with the same amount of force as the pull of the cart on the horse, why are they moving or accelerating? They're supposed to be not moving because they are, uh, you know, exerting the same amount of force. Okay, so let's try to figure out the different forces acting on this situation. Okay, there are six forces acting on the situation. Let's start with, with represented by different arrows. The yellow pull up the cart on the horse. So the direction is going to where? Pull up the cart on the horse. That's going to the right. The red pull up the horse on the cart. Okay, going to the left. Remember the magnitude, the length of the arrow is the same. So the magnitude is the same. Now, next force we have color pink force of the horse on the ground direction is going to the right next force force of the ground on the horse direction is going to the left okay next force green color force of the ground on the wheels direction to the left last force force of the wheels on the ground the orange uh, color going to the right. Now, among the six forces, which among the six forces makes the card accelerates or move? Which one? What do you think? Can you guess? Okay, the answer is only these two forces. The blue, which is force of the ground on the horse, force of the ground 
on the horse and the green one, which is force of the ground on the wheels. That's the only forces that makes the cart moves or accelerate. Understand? Okay. Now, summing it up. There you go. So, Newton's three laws of motion. Okay. First law is what we call the law of inertia. We discussed this in our second session. So, Newton's first law of motion, which is called inertia, the law of inertia, states that an object will not change its motion unless acted on by an unbalanced force. If it is at rest, it will stay at rest. If it is in motion, it will remain at the same velocity. So object with greater mass have more inertia because inertia is measure of the mass, uh, mass of the object. It takes more force to change their motion. When the inertia is higher, with, that is with, when the object has a greater mass, it takes more force to change their direction, just like, to change their motion rather. It's like this one, 300 kilogram compared to 30 kilograms, so which is the, uh, difficult to move the 100 or 300 kilogram because it has greater inertia now second law of motion law of acceleration newton's second law of motion it states that the acceleration produced by a net force on an object is directly proportional to the net force is in the same direction as the net force and is inversely proportional to the mass of the object so how do you call the newton's second law we call that the law of acceleration now the third law law of action reaction or law of interaction okay, another term for this one is law of interaction every action has an equal and opposite reaction so those are the three newton's laws of motion right let's try to check how much you understand you, you don't have a flicker card so you can use your one fourth Let's try to check. You don't have to use a picker card. Okay. You don't have. Okay. Here we go. Sorry for that. Let's get back. Where is it? Okay. Here we go. First question. If a fly collides with the windshield of a fast moving bus, which object experiences an impact force with a larger magnitude? This is an application of the Newton's three laws. Okay. What do you think? If a fly collides with a windshield of a fast-moving bus, which object experiences an impact force with a larger magnitude? What do you think is the answer? Of course, the answer is letter C. The same force is experienced by both. This is what law? Third law, law of interaction. In accordance with the Newton's third law, the fly and bus experience forces that are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Okay. All right, next. If a fly collides with the windshield of a bus, fast, a fast moving bus, which object experiences the greater acceleration? Okay. Of course, they. The fly explanation. So, because the fly has much, has such a small mass, Newton's second law tells us that it undergoes a very large acceleration. The huge mass of the bus means that it more effectively resists any change in its motion and exhibits a small acceleration. Okay, so these are references. Thank you very much. You have a great day.